Greetings, I am Schrodinger Deeps, and welcome to U-Boat. In this video, we will be attacking a major prize within Scarf Flow, a very challenging mission in which I am sure we will have to employ the submarine stealth capability to maximum effect. During our mission, I will deliver my first impressions of the game as we explore the mechanics in an attempt to survive. But first, a brief introduction. I have served so far approximately 15 years in Her Majesty's Royal Navy Submarine Service, so I know a little about submarines. That is to say, comparatively space age submarines. I am not a World War II submarine expert, and many things about the manning, operation and history of these amazing weapons of war are new to me. So, a big shout out to the U-Boat Discord that is full of people happy to share knowledge and engage in lively discussion. If you need help, that is a fantastic place to start. You know who you are. Now, onwards and downwards. Time and tide wait for no man. We are already underway. We are just north of the entrance to Scarpa Flow. Okay, it is now dusk, the sun has set, and we are prepared to make our approach into Scarpa Flow. Let's check everything is ready. So, welcome to the inside of the submarine. And this really is beautiful. You'll notice the crew going about doing their daily things, and this is not an arbitrary cutout. These crew members are not just eye candy. They really are making a difference on board. Everything that is happening counts. Take for example, the officer here, working on the torpedo. He is pre-warming the weapon to help prevent duds when launched. Everything matters towards the success of your future operations. It is absolutely fantastic. I think the one major difference between U-Boat and other subsims is the effort put in into making this a living, breathing submarine. The atmosphere that you have got, a functioning crew. And you know, you can literally go in and see your officers, he's sleeping, he needs to sleep. He can't be left on watch indefinitely. I'm just going to get the poor son out of bed. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and we can walk around the submarine freely, see everybody working. Absolutely fascinating. We can spend a fair bit of time just looking about at what everybody's doing. It is brilliant indeed. Anyway, oh, we are getting close. Without further ado, let's have a look. So, you'll notice that it's night time and we have white lighting inside of the submarine. This interferes with the crew's ability to dark adapt. By which I mean, they can't see as far. We can change that. We can order a crew member to turn on red lightings, or we can comfortably just do it ourselves. Now they can see further, better, and the screen will brighten when we're outside to allow us to see just that little bit better, which is perfect. Okay, let's check our course. Set a course. Set a course to these coordinates. Into the hornet's nest, if you please. Thank you very much. I'll see you when something happens. Hopefully we'll get quite far in. Okay, so we have detected our first enemy warship here, currently unclassified. We can look at it, we do have a god's eye view. Now this is an interesting point on the degree of simulation versus arcade playstyle within the game. The map is incredibly high powered. You get pretty much beyond a modern SSM's capability to track 
and engage the enemy. But you don't have to play it like that. You can, if you so wish, go into the periscope or the uh, Uzo or Yuzo, depending on your preference, and perform such actions manually. Here's our mission target. An escort. And you have the tools you'd expect, such as chronometers, statimeters, and course tools. Some of these aren't necessarily 100% realistic. That being said, the developers are very keen to engage with the modern community. And you can add things such as this thing here, which is a target data computer, and it is considerably more realistic and allows you to play the game in a different way. That is over to you as the player. I found that I like to use a mixture for my own personal enjoyment between the realism and arcade spectrum. It is genuinely fantastic. Anyway, so what do we have? Right now we have a warship. You can't see us. We have the visual range advantage being small. We can mouse over this and we'll see visibility 30%. Time of day, minus 60. Cloudiness, minus 24. Excellent. Also, because we are on the surface, the breaking of the waves is interfering with our own sound, and we get surface noise, minus 75%. Excellent. So, what are we going to do? It is time to approach the target. It is a little over five kilometers away, according to this here. So what we can do now is dive the submarine to periscope depth. And I'll show you what happens as we do that. So we'll take out a pause. And I'll just order them down to PD. Periscope depth. Now this doesn't happen instantaneously. As I said previously, this is a living, breathing submarine. You'll notice the crew are running around to operate particular valves. There he goes, you can see the icon above his head. They'll be flooding the ballast tanks, all coming below, getting themselves in the periscopes. Perfect. They'll be preparing to switch over to electric engines. Ballast tank number one is still empty. Our wheel, I'm using the incorrect terms, but that just helps me know who they are. And then there's ballast tank number five. Filled 100% with water. We are now neutrally buoyant. Electric motors. electric motors are active. Perfect. Now we're going to change our priority from visual detection to being quiet. So we're going to assume blue lighting. On your order. This will tell crew members that aren't doing anything important to go to bed, just to stay quiet. To creep about the submarine, reduce crew noise, turn off non-essential equipment, and allow us to sneak into the enemy's backyard. How are you doing, Frank? Good? Yeah, you get to work on them engines. Right. So, you'll notice that our max sight has considerably reduced now that we're using the periscope. So these little tabs here allow you to change who is working on what. You can distribute manpower accordingly. For example, adding a sailor to assist the captain with his periscope observation will increase the aiming speed by 25% and the range of observation. Let's get moving. Faster, faster. So, oxygen usage. Because we have silent running engaged, crew members know to rest whenever they can. This is given as a bonus. Minus 15% oxygen usage. Fully depleted in one hour, seven minutes. This isn't strictly true. Because we have the ability to run ship's ventilation, which will recirculate the air and give us more time beneath the waves. Of course, 
it is not unlimited. Now the hydrophone has detected warships move in on this bearing. We're going to continue to edge ourselves forward towards our target. Okay, now we are at periscope depth. We should just take a quick moment to check something before we begin moving in. A stitch in time and all that. So bilges have very little water in. However, we can safely turn that on now. Without risk of being counter detected and just clear that 0.2 meters cubed of water. And they will do so. Come on shippers. No running though. Hey! It's supposed to be quieter than that. And the compartments are dry. You can come back and turn that off. <laughs> Just like that. It is stunning, isn't it? Oh, it's dark. And that's such a good thing. Right. Onwards. Faster, faster. We're going to speed up. And notice as we speed up that a hydrophone rain circle decreases. So, we have our objective. To sink the Royal Oak. Why not, we say to ourselves. Change course. Now the Royal Oak is currently quite far away from us. 3.4 kilometers. That's actually not too bad. We can use that. Because it may give us the opportunity to reload a weapon almost immediately after the first one's hit. But what else do we have to ruin our day? Let's have a look. Just gonna put a marker here in case we lose it. Oh, just like that. <laughs> that was nice timing. Not complaining. Right then. We're going to try and attack it from a more bow on angle, so that's what we're going to do. Keeping a close eye on depth. I think we'll move to here. Change course. Let's keep that going. Whew. It is now tense on board. Whoa, stop, 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 stop. Didn't want to fast travel there. There he is. A swine. Let's see what we can turn off. Driver compass off. Check steer into the boat. There are various things we can do. So, noise, steering engines, electric engines, torpedo warning. We need to get quieter. So we're going to tell you guys to do this manually. Since sound is now the greatest risk of counter detection, even over a broached fin. Because it's so dark. Switch to manual steering. Yes please. Give a look. Yep, the engines are making the most noise at present. Let's crack on. So I've mentioned manual calculations. There is nothing wrong with me simply clicking the warship. Let's get him on a periscope. In fact, no. I'm saying calculate. Calculate torpedo course course just like that but before we get cracking with that our captain right now needs a cup of coffee he's looking a little bit weary eyed I'm gonna smash two cups in good and hydrophone, you can get it wet as well, because you look like you need aye, it. Aye, sir. There we are. You can see that they're much more comfortable to continue the attack. He did get off for a moment. Look at that. Right. You get cracking on that. Torpedo course. Stop. Slow it down. Change course. This is a lovely little attack bearing coming on. Slow, lazy turn. Here's our oxygen levels. Change 
and stop just for a moment we're going to quickly run some pumps so oxygen level it is going down we have 40 minutes left we don't want to be crying for oxygen once the enemy begin hunting us so what can we do we can just run the fans but that's not really the solution we want because it takes quite a while we can speed that up and increase our endurance even further by using potassium absorbers we'll stick them in the ventilation system just like that and then we're going to start the ventilation which we can do by clicking the button manually walk into it with one of our officers and turning it on or using the tab menu and clicking Copy. it whatever method you choose a sailor must actually do it okay now that's noisy so we need to be careful running this but you'll notice it won't take long two minutes we'll be fine there we are excellent now it's time to prepare our attack okay standby brief and we decided that in order to survive roger faster we will need to simultaneously attack the tribal and the royal oak but i want to use my stern tube for the tribal so we're going to get in a bit closer and position ourselves in a more favorable angle nice and slow Definitely in the danger zone here. Good job, it's night time. Possibility of counter detection is raising. Let's see what we can do. So, to calculate our simultaneous torpedo impact. First, we just need the range to the enemy. 1.3 and 1.1. Oops. Don't want that. Now, with the current ranges, that puts us in a decent position. In this instance, they are so close together, by the time we have finished flooding and firing the weapons for this, it would have already passed to 200 meters required. So, nice and easy. Range, 1,300. Velocity, zero. Of course, 0.6 looks quite good actually. Not bad. 1100. Of course, let's say north. Why not? Velocity zero. Excellent. Right, so, first target Stin Tube. And we'll just say two meters for you. Tube five is flooding. Tube five, flooded. Fire. Fire. And as quick as that, change it to this one. One, two, three, four. Tube two. Depth. It's got a nine meter draft. We're going to send them down to eight. As you can see, that's there. Fire! Fire! Off they go. So this one will take the whack just a bit early. Okay, standby impact. Mission objective up there. Let's watch the fireworks. Mind your ears, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Excellent. One in. Two in. Three in. We're gonna get four for four. It looks like it. Good. That's going down as well. Beautiful. Right. It's a hit. It's a hit. You want to get a shift on loading that? It's for you. Warm up tube five. Looks like we need one more. Stin tube is the option. 
Faster, faster. Time to get away. Faster. Faster, faster. Right. Next one. Down the bearing. Team five. Fire. Oh, stand by. Flood the team first, ship mate. I don't like that speed there and nice fact We're that I'm changing down. course. We're just going to catch that. Okay, good. Fire! Fire! Torpedo away. Torpedo is running normally. Okay, time to go. Faster! Faster! That was loud. Huh. Okay, get your periscope down. We're sneaking out of here. Didn't look like a miss to me, shipwreck. Right where it needed to be. Okay. Time to get out of Dodge. Tube four, loaded. Roger, Tube 4. Okay, it's time to leave. As quickly as we can. Faster, faster. Set a course to these coordinates. Take advantage of any moment we have where I can run pumps, for example. Let's check our bilges. Oh, we're looking good. Change course. He's looking dangerous. Right, we're gonna take a quick second for you, shippers, to get yourself get a wet. Because even though we're in the middle of a battle, for some reason, aye, aye, sir. you are moaning for a drink. And you. going to close upon me if I'm not careful. Keep an eye on the depth. Set a course to these coordinates. There are nets to worry about. But fresh air is saving the day. Okay, engineer, let's get you out of bed. Get yourself a wet. Yes, sir. Have two wets in fact. To get to work. Man in those engines. Faster, faster. How are we looking? Okay, silent running is no longer the priority. I should have changed that earlier. Red lighting in the control room. Continuous all around luck, if you please. Wonderfully dark night. Switch to diesel engines. Why can't you see? Any danger of giving? Yeah, there we go. Oh, it's gone again. So the officer is regularly dipping the periscope down below the horizon of the bridge, which is preventing them from seeing. You shouldn't be doing that. It's a minor irritation. I consider it a bug. Now this game is early access. It's a very good point and brings me smoothly to the glorious F11 key. Both. Here we are. Confirm. Because I have a TDC mod and compass mod. Right. So press F11. You get to choose the kind of bug and it's a gameplay issue. 
and said AI does not keep periscope above bridge when decks are washed. During transit, AI keeps lowering the mast height so it is impossible to see. And you just submit the report. Jobs a trout. Alright mate, why don't you try the observation periscope? Thing with the observation periscope, it's either up or down. And there we are. That's better. Off we go. Port defences may be near. Typically net and or mines. Whoop. Stop that. Now you see that he's no longer following the ordered course. We've just spoke of the devil. Let's see what's happening. Yep, we're getting clagged on a net. Or stop. So that's not good at all. We're going to have to perform an incredibly dangerous manoeuvre given the fact that the enemy are so close. Blow one, two, three, four main ballast tanks surface the submarine. And as I said before, if we're watching the crew, they will indeed go and operate the appropriate valves and systems to get the boat on the surface. Here comes our friendly weapon engineer and officer. I'm sure some of you will be correcting me with the appropriate terms. And that's the tanks being blown. The water is leaving the ballast tanks. Awesome. Right. This will hopefully get us over the net. Let's have a look. It's so difficult to see. Easy does it. Faster, faster. Rev's coming on. It's going to be close. If I can do it. And it appears... Yes, back on track. Right, so we've just blown a load of air. We're going to run both pumps. We need to get that air back up in case we need to dive again in an emergency. Set a course to these coordinates. Let's get out of here. I just thought, it looks like we're home free. We'll find out soon enough, just after midnight. You can go to bed now, no in fact. Yeah, rest up. You, get on the engines. Manage that fuel. The advantage of having officers managing engines is we do get a tremendous bonus to fuel. Get our radio operator sending messages. Job done. <laughs> Good luck. Right, if the rest of the journey is uneventful, then I'll see you when we get near port. Right, well, here we are ladies and gentlemen. And the cover of darkness in storm force hell. We are returning home, safe and sound, ready for some tear medals. Perfect. So to summarize, this game has got some of the most beautifully designed elements to provide the sensation of a working submarine that I'm yet to see in any simulator previously. It is extremely enjoyable. It's got a very broad mix between arcade and simulator, particularly with regards to target solutions and the map. However, players can pick and choose how they want to play. I mean, you can notice I'm using the cutaway a lot to cruise around the submarine, but that really isn't necessary at all. Any member can just as easily 
walk in and take charge of a crew member. Ask say please and operate the submarine. First person. Doing a bit of scrubbing out shit, mate. At this time of night, do you know that people are trying to sleep? Absolute spanner. Out of the way. Yeah, so... It's a particularly interesting game. And it is developing rapidly. I know it is currently early access, and you will inevitably encounter a great many frustrations. But, as you've seen, we have brilliant methods of reporting the bugs, including the Discord, where people will assist you in resolving various problems. The modern community is phenomenal. For many aspects of the game, if you feel it is too arcade, you can. Oh, it's a bit noisy here. It's gonna get through this area. You can easily adjust the game to suit your realism needs. And I'm sure that will continue to progress along with the game's development. In short, even though it's early access, it is worth a look, providing you are willing to enjoy the teething problems and restart occasionally. You're shoving me around, shipwreck. It's you again, isn't it? Absolute swine. Oi! Can't believe it, he's barged me up there. So, if you've enjoyed that brief introduction to the interesting submarine simulator that is U-Boat, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to chat, come and join my Discord. A link is in the description. But for now, this concludes your broadcast day. Thanks for watching.